When I joined the Appropriations Committee a little over four years ago, I said that I wanted this committee to be known as a place where taxpayer money was saved and not spent. And in recent years, there's been a major change in the perception of this committee. Thanks in large part to the leadership of Chairman Rogers and the members of, this, of the committee, the process is open and it's transparent. And this committee has made a priority of ensuring every taxpayer dollar is spent wisely. And in keeping with that trend, the bill that we're here to debate today holds the line on spending. It's a bill that honors and respects the taxpayer while preserving the beauty of the Capitol campus, providing essential security for visitors and staff, and ensuring that we are able to provide the services that our constituents expect and deserve. This bill is a total of $3.3 billion for the legislative branch, excluding all Senate items. The bill continues the freeze on funding for the House of Representatives, including leadership, committees, and member office budgets. It also continues the member pay freeze that was put in place in 2010. And all this represents a 14% reduction in funding for the House of Representatives since Republicans have gained control of Congress in January of 2011. Now, more specifically, this bill increases funding for the Capitol Police and allows small increases for several other agencies, but while trimming budgets in less critical areas. This bill recognizes the continuing challenges faced by our architect of the Capitol. There's a balance that must be struck between preserving these historic buildings and funding other critical projects, including life safety projects. Overall, the architect's budget is one that was trimmed. This bill puts a new emphasis on transparency and accountability in major construction projects under the architect. That's why this bill transitions to direct appropriations for the Cannon Restoration Project rather than continuing to use the House Historic Building Revitalization Fund. This change will significantly improve the committee's ability to provide oversight for this major project. Additionally, this bill includes language that places a 25% cap on the amount available for larger projects within the legislative branch. And in order to receive the remaining 75% of their appropriations, this new oversight features requires a plan for any project over $5 million to be submitted to the GAO and our committee for approval. The plan must address any projected changes to the project's schedule and cost, and it must include a description of the safeguards taken to ensure that the project remains on time and on budget. Now, regarding the Library of Congress, this bill includes funding to meet the library's current needs, including an increase for the Copyright Office to reduce claims processing and analyze possible improvements. Additionally, the committee will be working with the library in the upcoming months to track its progress in addressing its critical IT infrastructure problems which have been identified in a recent GAO report. In closing, I'd like to thank Ranking Member Wasserman Schultz, Chairman Rogers, Ms. Lowy, and the members of our subcommittee and full committee and staff for their hard work throughout this entire process. This is a product that we can be proud of. Mr. Chairman, I'll reserve the balance of my time. Chairman